One of the most common complaints I see brought up about LF is the fact that it doesn't have a bulk rename function like Ranger does. But because of the way the application is designed, there is absolutely no reason that we can't add this in ourselves, and that's what we're going to be doing today. Now, what we're going to be looking at is a program by the name of ViMV, and this program is not made for LF whatsoever, it's just a generic bulk renaming tool, but we can actually integrate that into LF very, very easily. So this is basically just a shell script, so if you don't like Python scripts or anything like that, I'm sure you can be happy with this. And it is a batch renamer that uses Vim. It doesn't really use Vim, what it does is it reads your editor variable, and then basically uses that as the buffer. But just accept the description. Now, it's very easy to install, so if you want to download it from the GitHub page, as I said, it is just a shell script, so just download it, and then chmod it, or you can download it with curl if you want to do that, or it's also available in the AUR. All of them will be the exact same, doesn't really matter how you go about installing it. And obviously, if you do download it from the GitHub page, make sure that you actually put it in a place that can be read from your path variable, otherwise you have to put in the full path to the script. So, now that that's out of the way, let's just have a look at how the application actually works. Now, if we just write ViMV with no arguments, basically what it's going to do is try to rename every file in my current directory. So, in this case, it's going to be my home directory. If you're in pictures, it would be your pictures. If you're in scripts, it would be scripts, so on and so forth. Now, I've got a couple of test files here, so let's just add the letter I to the start of all of these. And then if we just save and quit this, as you can see, it is renamed four files. So if we were to do that without saving, basically it's just going to ignore any of those changes. So delete that. Now if we just quit without saving, as you can see, none of the files have been renamed. So you have to make sure you save and quit when you do it. I don't know how to do that in Nano. If you use Nano, then I assume you know how to save and quit. Now you don't just have to work on your entire directory, that would be a little pointless. Sometimes you just want to modify a small subset of files, like let's say you wanted to modify every single file that was a PNG file for example. So if we just go ViMV, now I don't have any PNG files in here, so I'm just going to use my made up extension, so .test. So if we do star .test, it's going to try to rename every single file that ends in .test. As you can see here, that just brings up those test files we saw before. So let's just add another letter to the start of these. Let's just add R to the start. Now if we save and quit this, as you can see, it is renamed four files. You don't just have to use wildcard matching for an extension. You can also do it with just parts of a name. So let's say we do star TE star. Basically, that's going to try to find anything that has the letters TE in it. So we run this, and as we can see, there's notes. Those, those things we are making just before, there's templates, and there's some other test files I had for a different video. So, obviously, as we did before, we could go and modify these. Let's just make these files basically back to how they normally were. Now we save this. As you can see, it is now renamed four files again. If you happen to need a more complex search than this, I would recommend doing it with a program like, say, Find because that would just be a bit easier. Now, you can't just pipe something directly into ViMV, it's not going to work like that. So if we do find-max-depth-1, basically, as you can see, that will list out every single file that's in our current directory. If we were to pipe this into ViMV, it doesn't exactly work the way you'd expect it to, because it's missing a file name. Basically, ViMV will work from a temp directory. If the temp directory file is not there, it's basically not going to work. So. We can't do it like this, but that doesn't mean we have to give up all hope. What we can do instead is we can go ViMV, and what we can do is use command substitution. So if we do find-max-depth-1, as you can see, we now have that temp file that we need from before, and we can start modifying stuff in here. Now, obviously, the order is going to be a little bit different from what we were used to before, but it should still work just fine. So let's say we wanted to add the letter I to this file right here. Now, if we save this and quit, as you can see, it is still renamed one file, which means it is actually working correctly. We try this again, and if we look for that one, as you can see, it is right here. So, ifile2, basically, it will still work exactly the way you'd expect. Now, the other way this will work is you can actually just directly pass a list of files in. So, let's say we do vimv file.test, file3.test, uh, and then we run it like this. As you can see, that also works. So you can either do space separated file names or you can do new line separated file names. I believe in LF it does new line separated file names, but I could be mistaken there. One thing that I wasn't expecting to work was it'll actually work if you have spaces in your file name. So I was testing this a little bit off camera, 
But if we just run vimv and just grab every test file, as you can see, I have a file in here that has a space in its name. Now, if this program wasn't written correctly, if I tried to rename this, it would kind of just break horribly. But let's just add a bunch of extra spaces. So this is a file. So that is a bunch of extra spaces. Let's save this and quit. As you can see, the rename is still working properly. And if we bring that open just again, it's still managing to find the file just fine. And if we have a look at that in ls, the name has definitely been set. So that seems to be working correctly. Now, I wouldn't recommend setting spaces in your file names just because they're a little bit funky to work with from the terminal for just regular use cases. Because what you have to do, if you've never done it, I wouldn't recommend doing it. Let's say we wanted to make one. What you have to do is you actually have to quote the name. So fi space le, that would be a file name with a space in it. Don't do this. Bad idea. It just makes your life way harder than it needs to be. If you need to kind of emulate spaces, do something like dashes or underscores because then it's still treated as a single word. And if there's no space in there, then you obviously don't need the quotes and it will just make everything a bit easier to work with. So just completely avoid spaces. But if you really, really need spaces or say you've copied some files from Windows and you want to get rid of all the spaces, it still will work to actually do that. One thing you need to keep in mind when you're using this application is that you should never ever delete file names that are actually in your buffer. Now I haven't tested what's going to happen and I wanted to save this till it was actually on camera. So let's just see what's actually going to happen. So if we just go into that test directory where hopefully nothing bad is going to break and we just run vi mv. Now we've got a couple of files in here. Let's just delete the line here and just modify this here. So we'll call this ifile4. If we save this, Oh, okay, that's actually not as bad as I expected. I thought it was just going to break really horribly. So, it can't move to n that file to nothing. Oh, that's not that bad. I don't know what you're talking about then. That's just like a, a tiny mistake. So, don't remove file names, but it's not as catastrophic as the developer, I guess, made it out to be. Now, I guess I should show you how to integrate this into LF. Now, this is straightforward. So what we're going to do is go down to our config directory, go into the LF folder and into the LFRC file. Now, if you don't have this folder or this file, obviously go and make them and then LF will start trying to read from this location. Now, what we're going to be doing is adding in a new mapping. So I've got this map to BR, but you could map it to whatever it is you want to map it to. So basically the way you do that is you write map. That means do a new mapping. Then the mapping you want it on, I've got it on the letters BR. So when I press B and then I press R, basically it's going to execute some sort of function in LF. And then I'm executing a shell program. And the way you say that in LF is basically you prepend it with a dollar sign. So I'm executing vimv with $FX. Now $FX basically means every single file that you've currently got selected. So once you've done all that, basically just save it. And if you got to this file with LF, you obviously want to quit out of LF and then reopen it. So let's go down to my test directory that we were using just before and let's select all of these. So my selection key is set to space, but you might have it on something different. I think space is the default binding though. So we select all of these and now I press BR and this is basically going to do the exact same thing we saw before. Obviously LF is a little bit different where it takes the entire absolute path, whereas running VIMV just in your like home directory is just going to take the relative path. But the concept is the exact same. It's similar to what we were doing with find. One neat thing I didn't mention before is because it's just using the move command, you actually can move these to a new location. So let's say we just want to move this back to our home directory. And also we want to change the name to ifile3. This one, let's say we want to add the letter E to it. And we want to move it into, I don't know, the pictures directory or something. And let's just leave the other two the same. So if we just save this, as you can see, there are now two missing files from here, and these files actually haven't had their names changed. But if we go over to my pictures directory, we go down to efile, there it is, efile test. So that one is now in our pictures directory. The other one should be somewhere in our home directory. And as we can see, that is actually in our home directory. The nice thing about using MV to do this rather than trying to use some sort of custom renaming function is that it still will let you actually move to a new directory. So if you want to have all of your JPEG files moved into a JPEG folder and all your PNGs moved into a PNG folder or whatever it is you want to do like that, you can actually do this with this method. 
I know I talked about LF in this video, but there is no reason why you couldn't use this in anything else you want to use. As you saw before, we were doing it directly from our terminal. If you have some new file manager you've just found that doesn't have a bulk rename function, but you want one, and there is some way to bind key bindings to system applications, then you could use it in that. Or let's say you don't like the bulk rename function in Ranger. You could then try to replace that with this program. Or say you don't like the one in VIFM. You could do that as well. Obviously, since those programs have bulk rename functions, you probably don't have any use for trying to replace them. But it's just a hypothetical. If you want to do that, then there's no reason why you couldn't do that with this application. Because, as we said, it's such a generic application that has no interest in where the file names actually came from. All it cares about is you gave it some file names, and then it's just going to try to move them. That's all it does. It doesn't really care about anything else. I think that's basically everything I want to talk about in this video, but before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, DeAndre, Platten, Dog Road, Tony, Oki, Larry, and Zilver. If you want to support the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use on this channel, or just anything else you want to buy. I saw the first purchase I got was for some sweet rolls, which is interesting. An interesting choice for a tech channel, but sure, someone bought some sweet rolls and I get a small kickback for it. Now, I've also got my podcast, that is Tech Over Tea, so that is available on Library and YouTube for the video version, and wherever it is you want to listen to podcasts for the audio version. Also, remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below, and remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.